Hello there, I see you have stumbled upon this channel. Well, uh, not much happens here, but today I've got something specifically tailored towards Miss Zombie Cleo. Uh, this is a brief tutorial covering all the basics and uh, potential implications of the Mistcraft mod, which I know she's been wanting to look into. So, I've set up a few things around this fairly simple world. Really more of it's Farmcraft than anything else, but nonetheless. So, let's just dive quickly into our first order of the business, which is the recipes. So, first we have the notebook. The notebook stores the different glyphs that you can find inside of the descriptive books which allow you to build worlds. Uh, but we'll get into that a bit later when we touch on to the next item. This is the writing desk. It, fold it fills up a 2 by one space, much like a bed does, and it can hold a notebook and a descriptive book at once. It's very important that you keep a notebook in it, but again, I'll be going into that in a moment. This extremely expensive object is a link modifier. It allows you to add certain specific qualities to different books. And the two recipes that you can craft in your own inventory are the descriptive book, which allows you to create entirely new worlds, and the linking book, which allows you to jump back to specific locations. So, we can see that we have in my behind my little uh, containment here, we have two books and a feather. So, we shall make a linking book. And let's have a look inside of it, shall we? Well, we can see that it goes to the overworld, which is the default location, and we can see that there's this big box over the side. If I click on that, as you can probably hear, nothing is happening. That is because a linking book and most descriptive books cannot go to the same location, to the same dimension. They have to hop across between them. Which is why I tend to build uh, hubs inside of the Never for overworld locations. Now, if we combine a book and a feather, we get a descriptive book. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Well, it's age number seven, because this is the seventh world that I've made. And we've got this big box again. I'm not going to click on that just yet, because if I click on that now, you can see on the left-hand side that there are no symbols. That means that this book has not been written to, so if I click that box, it's going to generate a completely random new world, uh, which is useful and detrimental in both in a, a couple of different ways. So let's have a look here. We've got a notebook here. This one has been spawned in from the creative menu, so it has all of these things completely unlocked. But normally your notebook starts out blank and you have to add to them. And you add to them by creating randomized descriptive books, which then have their own symbols, which you can add into your notebook. Once you have those symbols unlocked, you can apply them to a blank book. So let's go for single biome, uh, planes, uh, we'll have bright lighting, uh, let's see, red clouds, chromatic sunset, black sky, and white fog. And let's see, what kind of little pieces are we going to have? Well, let's put in... Dungeons. Dungeons galore. You can stack the symbols, but doing so can increase your uh, instability. Let's see. Void, standard terrain, flat. Let's go for standard terrain. Time. There are variable settings for time. You can make it go very quickly or very slowly. And we'll just have eternal day, because that's the one I usually like. And you can also control the weather, which is of a special note if you're on a server where for some reason it tends to rain a lot. And the last part is the world modifier. These have a very high tendency of making your world unstable, uh, particularly the dense ores version, which creates additional ores in your world, but that is almost a guarantee of instability. But so which is going with these skylines? Now, the reason that I've picked symbols out of each of these tabs is because if I don't pick them before I click into this book, it will randomly select some, which potentially means if I don't select the right, a, a large enough volume, then they will be randomly selected for and I'll get instability. Now, you don't have to pick out of all of them. World Modifier you can pretty much leave entirely alone. But uh, it's wise to pick as many as you can, usually at least one out of each of these tabs, uh, with the exception of World Modifier, so that you don't get instability. So now that we've got a book that we've written to, we can see it has all of these symbols, and we can read them, but we can't write into them unless they're written into our notebook, such as being put into that writing table. So, let's have a look at age 7. It takes a moment to log in. Oh, and by the looks of that burning pig, we've got a world that's unstable. 
let's see what we've got here. We've got slowness 2, nausea, and occasionally being set on fire. But we have a brand new world, and I'm going to jump out before this kills me. Yeah, just waiting for this nausea to kick off. It'll be fine in a few seconds. There we go. Now you may notice that the H7 book is here, but my descriptive book isn't, and that is because, as I said, books cannot link to the same dimension. And they also usually tend to drop when you leave. So to resolve that, we use this link modifier. Uh, this one already has generate platform, because all descriptive books had to do as a default. Linking books don't. And we have following, which allows the book to follow with you rather than being dropped at the floor. The intralinking, which allows you to move to locations within the same dimension. Disarm, which causes your entire inventory to drop when you use it. And maintain momentum. Portals, as we're about to see, possess this quality inherently, much like generate platform on descriptive books. Uh, we're just going to use interlinking and following, they're the two that I usually use, and they're generally the most useful. Now, the link modifier, extremely expensive. Probably best to have something like this at spawn for everyone to use. The writing desk you can maybe have on different, have in different places, but if you're going to have a cheated in, fully, uh, fully filled out uh, notebook, then it's probably best to have that at spawn as well. But, we have these crystals, these magical, wonderful crystals. And we've got this little book receptacle, but you may notice this is not in the same shape as a nether portal. And if I step through here, you can also see that it's got different colours. These colours are randomly selected when you put a book into the book receptacle, and you, that's not a very nice colour, is it? That's better. So how do we get these crystals? Well, they are a natural feature inside of a number of Mistcraft worlds. It's a fairly rare feature uh, inside of terrain features. And it causes these bluish crystals to appear in big chunks, sort of like how glowstone crystals form in the nether. So, oh, hang on, we put the wrong book in there, didn't we? Let's put crystals back in. Handy feature of the latest versions of Miscraft is you can see the name above. So, let's take a look. Okay, so this rather admittedly neon location is surrounded by crystals. In fact, I've only added it, added the... Uh, quality once, I believe, and yet it's everywhere. This is a world I created specifically to farm crystals, and you can put them into, as you can see, almost any number of shapes. They can be absolutely massive, and they will pretty much line up as long as they can go diagonal or straight across, so that's something you also need to keep in mind when you're building a hub out of these. But to actually make a portal out of them, you need a book receptacle, which is this recipe here. It's pretty simple, it's just the chest formation. And that gives you a book receptacle which you put onto the side of a piece of crystal and you put a book in with the right click. And that allows you to make a portal. Now again, this feature is somewhat rare and hard to come by. I, I personally went through about 99 worlds uh, in, in, in survival mode to find them, but uh, I've heard of others having to go through hundreds. So if, if someone finds it and you're not cheating something in, Definitely worth sharing the notebook, otherwise, definitely worth having a cheated book. So there is the quick and simple guide to using Mistcraft. The more worlds you create, the more world you create, the more potential worlds you can make perfect. For one, for one example, you can have a world that uses the portals to send items back. One such example is right over here with my farms world. Now, this world is a void world, eternal day, plains biome, so that means it's never day, it's never night, so there's no monsters ever, as long as I don't create a very dark area. I've got pieces of portal, portal railcraft and farmcraft just handling everything over here, and if I wanted to, I could chuck an item back through this portal. So let's give an ex that an example, shall we? Just grab a stack of sugar cane. back over to the portal, and if I chuck this out, apparently I crashed the game. So that's probably a bug in more recent versions, but uh, that's something I've delighted with in other versions. Anyways, works perfectly well with mobs, and of course we'll have to see about this when, when this gets fixed, but oh well, I guess that's something you now know not to do for a while. Anyways, I shall catch you next time, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.